Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, Linus uh, um, discussing spin, lock, spin locks. Anyway, uh, so I'm just going to give a little lecture here. So uh, Linux, Linux wants to be a 1970s mainframe. Um, so uh, a mainframe had limited re resources, let's say about 2 meg of RAM, and they had to operate with 100 users. And uh, if it crashed, that was terrible. You would never want to crash. Um, my my operating system wants to be a, uh, a Commodore 64. And the uh, a Commodore 64 user in the user's manual it tells how to make binary numbers to make a sprite graphic so the users the purpose was to make sprite graphics with binary data that's what you did with the commodore 64 little basic programs and stuff so those are that's uh now um i like to say linux linux is a semi Windows is a car. Temple OS is a motorcycle. The reason I call Linux Linux a semi, a semi had has 20 gears, and uh, that's never going to be a, a passenger car. Um, file permissions that does not belong in. A consumer product file permit uh, it's a big hassle so uh, the Linux people are all deluded uh, anyway so uh, you don't have side airbags no side airbags you know what's pretty crazy if you lean over on a motorcycle it crashes isn't that crazy don't do that <laughs> I could crash my operating system pretty easily, but that's not that's not very interesting. Anyway, uh, so uh, um, let me just tell you something. Uh, if I had to summarize how people think, well, first of all, everybody is fighting the last war. Everybody is looking at 1970s mainframes. And uh, if you, if anybody was discussing my operating system, you can bet they would be reinventing a 1970s mainframe. First of all, a mainframe had two meg for a hundred users. Uh, it goes without saying you have to use virtual memory. That's where you use the disk. Now on today's computers. You, you have eight gig every anyway um so uh you know what happen if you ever do cause it to start uh swapping to disk it's way too slow to be acceptable if anybody today started swapping to disk they would say oh this is unacceptable we need to change something so um, virtual memory that doesn't belong on a modern computer um, I'm interested in uh, having pretty code anyway uh, so uh, I'm not talking about paging I'm talking about virtual memory virtual memory is where you swap to disk anyway uh, but there's other things uh, if you have 2 meg for 100 users uh, when you're compiling you better not use up very much memory because that's rude um, but uh, on my operating system um, I I, uh, I load whole files this is a totally different way of thinking um, on Linux you use a pipe you load a little chunk then you process it then you load a little chunk then you process it um, on my operating system I load whole files so uh, 
what am I trying to achieve? Um, my highest ideal is uh, minimum lines of code. Lines of code. So if you have to make a choice, pick the one that uses less code. Um, because we want, our, our vision is a Commodore 64. And on a Commodore 64, it was user, this is, I'm going to patent this, I'm going to make a trademark. User developer. Okay, user developer. Um, a Commodore 64 was a user developer machine. Okay, so uh, as a matter of fact, I am really close to banning third-party developers. My, uh, if I have to make a choice, I pick the user developer over the third-party developer. Um, so I set a goal of, I set a, a limit of 100,000 lines of code um, and no third-party libraries. Okay. My vision is a Commodore 64 and that had a ROM, 20K ROM. And everybody brought with them everything they, they needed. So, uh... Here's here's what I want to say. Um, all all computer people today have been Jedi mind tricked. They obsess on uh, if there's one thing they all want to show you that they know is uh, scaling. Scaling. Everybody is obsessed with scaling. Guess what? Scaling works both ways. You can get bigger. What happens if you look the other direction and you scale down? Everybody knows uh, it doesn't get bad. It gets worse when you scale up. It doesn't get bad. It gets worse. In other words, it's not linear. Guess what? It doesn't just get better. It gets, well, I don't have a word. It gets better when you scale down. So guess what? A linker. If I don't have a linker on my system, I just you know how when you do cc uh, I don't know test dot c and it makes an a dot out. Uh, that's kind of how we operate. We hit F5 and uh, we don't have a linker. We don't have a make utility. Do you want to know what's funny? You want to see? You want to see how I, I do a project? I make a file with this is including code. This is not headers. This is hilarious. Anybody? Do you think that's funny? You want to see me do a make all? Okay, I want to do a make all. I hit my. I have a one key. That's make all. I just made uh, fifty thousand lines of code, uh, and that's. I just compiled from scratch 50,000 lines of code. My kernel is 20,000. My compiler is 20,000. Um, so 50,000. Anyway, so that's all the code there is. Everything else is just in time. And you saw how fast that was a second to do that. The Atom directory gets compiled during boot. This is Atom as in Adam and Eve. Anyway, so everybody else has been Jedi mind trick. This is funny. Um, when I tell people that I set a two gig limit for codes, okay, there's a call instruction, call relative 32. And uh, my operating system is 64 bit, but I purposely use only call relative 32, and I put all code in the lowest two gig. This instruction, there's not, there's not a 64-bit call instruction. What you have to do is you have to move it into RAX. Um, one, two, three, four. You have to move it into RAX and then do a call RAX. And look at this. This takes up, I don't know, 10 bytes. This instruction is 10 bytes, and this instruction is whatever, 3 bytes, something like that, 3, 4. Anyway, uh, 
my call relative is five so I'm looking at a lot fewer bytes anyway and it's faster um, so uh, when I tell people I'm making a two gig limit do you know what they're thinking in their mind they have been Jedi mind tricked bah ha 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 Bill Gates is so stupid he said 640k would be enough he is just stupid bah ha 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 so when I say two gig they say we're not that stupid we know it's never enough okay well these are obviously not the sharpest sharpest knife in the drawer okay people what is what is enough you know what I'm saying like that's the difference in sheep and shepherds uh, Linux is a Unix it's not really original uh, so yeah uh, there I, I kind of laugh at people who it, imagine in 1900 imagine a hotshot engineer at I don't know Westinghouse or something hotshot electrical engineer and imagine him making fun of Tesla I'm just saying some some uh, hotshot hotshot engineer I'm better than Tesla I know math and him being really arrogant and then you're saying dude <laughs> you are no Tesla <laughs> anyway so there's a lot of people who are really arrogant and you know physicists what are there 2,000 physicists at CERN or not CERN I don't know just 2,000 physicists not one of them is famous because they haven't done anything original yet a lot of them are walking around as though they're in the same league as Tesla no there's a difference when it's not when you're following a trail you're not a trailblazer so um, you know what's funny um, let's just say let's say import well let's say let's say we're reading a status let's do a little analysis um, let's say you're doing a hardware driver and you're waiting on a disk to be ready okay so you do an import on a status IO and if it's not ready if status and busy so we read a port and if it's busy we yield um, let's do a little analysis of this okay uh, first of all import just a rule of thumb is an is an in or out instruction is one microsecond in or out is one microsecond yield that's where you save all your context and load all your context okay Linux has uh, a large overhead for context um, they have to save the uh, CR3 they have to change their entire memory map every time they change tasks I don't change my memory map and I don't I don't change privilege levels anytime you change privilege levels it has to load and save stuff and check stuff um, this is gonna blow people's minds I can um, do you want to know how many save restores I can do I can do four million save restores per second this is hilarious I can save tasks and switch tasks faster than I can read a port okay reading the port is a million I can I can do 4.5 you want to see me do it watch this okay so here's my uh, context swaps we're doing 10,000 that's because I'm writing I'm making a video as we speak um, 
So let's go ahead and say while true yield. I don't need parentheses. Okay, watch this. Okay, we're doing, well, we're not hitting four or five, but we're not doing too bad. Okay, so let's do some analysis. Uh, I, I can, um, believe it or not, I can get, I can get a lot of, uh, uh, well, let's do S. Let's talk about SMP. Okay. Well, first of all, um, so my vision is a motorcycle. So what do I mean by that? Um, li li everybody who is a Linux person would move heaven and earth just so that you can play two video games at once. They they they're full of pride. It's like Russians. Okay, NASA spent millions to make a space pen. Russia used a pencil. That's kind of the foolishness. That's not, that's a fable. It's not a true fable, and it's not necessarily something to be proud of. I called my company Trivial Solutions. Well, pencil would be a trivial solution. I, I don't use uh, privilege levels. And um, anyway, so... Uh, so on my this is all the tasks these these are all the tasks there's one let's call it sir there's one master task for i don't know what it's called a seth task adam is the first task and his children are seth um for the different cores anyway uh so uh the seth task and the adam task so anyway i have eight cores and they're they're all they have one i guess you call it an executive task um, so, uh, on my core zero, um, on my core zero, I have, uh, I have a window manager, which is in charge of painting the window. This is my frame grabber, and this is the ta this is the current task that we're, the task ID, that's the address of the task record. Anyway, and then I have my atom task. So uh, on a typical, let's say you run a game. That's that's what this is for, running games like a Commodore 64. What are you going to do? Maybe you make an uh, animation task. So basically you're going to run one application at a time, and it might be multi-threaded. On this operating system, everything uses the same memory map, so there's not a distinction between process and thread. There's not in task. There's just there's no distinction. You know, in fairness, uh, okay. So when I'm waiting for my disk, I do well import yield. Okay, and what it let's analyze this. This is I don't know, I don't care. You know, somebody's gonna call it blocking. It's these little brainwashed book people who couldn't it's Tesla being mocked by you know, somebody who reads a book. You know what I'm saying? If you got it out of a book, yeah, whatever. So I I adapt to a new reality. They're all fighting the last war, they're making nineteen seventies mainframes. I don't know why, and they're mocking me. So I can I can save tasks. Oh, well, let's analyze this. If we have five tasks, and I do a round robin, I don't do priorities. Uh, is, is it is it because I can't do priorities? No, it's because an idiot admires complexity. A genius admires simplicity. A physicist tries to make it simple. Anyway, uh, an idiot, anything, the more complicated it is, the more he will admire it. If you make something so clusterfucked he can't understand it, he's going to think you're a god because you made it so complicated nobody can understand it. That's how they write journals in academic journals. They, they try to make it so complicated people think you're a genius. Okay. Anyway, so if I have five tasks, let's say two of them, one of them, let's, long story short, when you're waiting for 
a key it it's it doesn't get swapped in until um, I forgot how that works anyway yeah keys and uh, there's if you're waiting for a message it it's permanently swapped out if you're waiting for a time a jiffy it's permanently swapped out um, when, when it goes around the the circle scheduling um, sometimes it will never load it until it's ready on other things it will load it and check and then the task will swap out again if you have two tasks reading from the disk both of them are operating this code now let's analyze that uh, if one is ready then it gets swapped in then when it has to wait to come back around the circle of tasks um, it's uh, let's say you have five tasks you're gonna take five times a quarter of a microsecond so it's gonna take you a microsecond it's not it's not just in other words if you swap out it's not uh, if you have five tasks you have to divide this by five so what if you have a hundred tasks now it's beginning to be a serious problem but that's not my concern I'm, I'm making a Commodore 64 um, I don't do sharing so if your task is doing 20 meg of disk read um, then you got you lock it out from anybody else my vision is a, a single video game running with multiple threads um, and uh, I don't I, I'm not trying to run two video games at once you know that's that's I don't care um, anyway so uh, another thing is SMP this is kind of hilarious this is gonna shock you I, I think this is gonna make people shocked you know Linus the other day mentioned that uh, multi-core was overrated um, well this this is not, I'm not gonna show you um, long story short I my plan is master slave um, so what that means is uh, all all applications run on core zero and when they want multi-core they make a slave task on another core directly so for example um, I have eight cores this flight simulator is uh, running on eight cores Linus said the only thing that parallel is good for is graphics well he's using a GPU so he's only using one core on the CPU I I do my graphics with the CPU so I can actually use um, um, now if I had uh, if I have seven tasks doing graphics uh, what if one of them what if the scheduler puts two of them on one core uh, that's just not gonna work because we need updates if if uh, if the scheduler decided to put two on one core you just it's you just blew your so instead of 60 frames per second I, I do 30 instead of 30 frames per second you're doing 15 frames a second just because the scheduler put two on one core that is just not acceptable so um, if you want to do multi-core temple OS is the only one that can use multi-core effectively um, Linux will run Linux will proudly run two applications faster they're very proud they can run two applications faster temple OS can run one application faster <laughs> Temple OS can only run one application faster. Linux can run two applications faster. They're geniuses, okay? Anyway, so how about that? So everything gets smaller when, or it gets better. It doesn't just get bad when you scale up, it gets worse. It doesn't just get better when you scale down. Namespaces, if you have, we can look at my namespace these are all the symbols in the symbol tables it's getting up there what are we at we're at uh, I'm trying to I why doesn't it show me lines of code oh well oh 
what is the line number? I forgot. I'm in the editor, am I not? I'm spacing out. I could swear I have a line a line counter. Why isn't it showing the lines? Anyway, so this is all my symbols. Um, if you if you keep it small, you only need one namespace. If you keep it small, okay, this is you I know somebody's gonna contradict me. Okay, so when it gets big, you have to adapt and change your way of programming to use namespaces, long variable names. See, unfortunately, you can't get people to go the other direction. If you have a, my operating system is 100,000 lines of code. Linus is very proud that his is 50 million. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't know, 40 million, 20 million. He's trying to make it bigger to intimidate people or something. Anyway, uh, so if you make it small, you can use the, oh let's, global variables. Okay, there are arrogant people who uh, let's say you're you're making a game for kids. You're a kid. You're making a game. It's it's a couple hundred, it's a hundred, what are we, we're at a hundred, we're at 188 lines of code. Okay, I was, uh, that's what wasn't showing up. Okay, 180 lines of code. Now, are global variables the right or the wrong answer for this situation? There are a lot of people who will say, oh, you shouldn't use global variables. You're not going to be a good programmer if you learn that way. Yeah, we all started with Commodore 64s. Nobody, nobody knows what a pointer is. Nobody knows what assembly code is. They've all been so confused by the liberals trying to make it easy for them. I don't understand how you can make Malik and Free simpler if you, they're they're making it so that nobody has any clue what really goes on. You know, it's a liberal with their bleeding heart trying to be nice to the poor people. They're, they're making it worse. Just man up and learn what Malik and Free are. I like Linus because he likes C and doesn't like C++. I like C++, but uh, I'm impressed by... I like industry, not academia. Anyway, um, in industry, in, in academia, if it's good, you publish... In industry, if it's good, you keep it a secret. <laughs> anyway, so um, I don't, I don't actually like that attitude. Anyway, um, so uh, global variables are the right answer. Now, the second question is um, long variable names. If you scale down, the right answer is short variable names and function names. So. Um, I've been, um, uh, F1 is my help. I want this so that everybody can get their head around it, like a Commodore 64. So, um, I'm trying to make, short names are delightful. You know that? There, there's just something very nice about short variable names. I did 64-bit date times. Now, isn't that cool? Let's just look at some of my other short names. Anyway, um, oh well, so that's that.